Hello there, I'm the Base Manager and welcome back to Space Engineers. Now, uh, today we were supposed to work on the uh, defensive auto drones, uh, but, uh, well, I don't know if we are going to work on that. This is going to be one of those uh, we see what the game gives us kind of episodes, because, uh, well, in between episodes I Use the heavy drone that we built last episode to test out the script. After all, I kind of wanted to get a feeling for uh, this before I uh, did anything. Uh, so, uh, of course, the refineries had to be loud as uh, hell, but okay, we'll have to ignore them. So, in order to get this thing to work, I also needed to download another mod, which was the advanced sensors. Uh, just so they have extra range, as this is the range at which the ship will detect the enemies and move towards them. Uh, so this script allows you to have um, a two pro uh, remote controls, uh, one regular remote control and a patrol control, uh, control block. Just so if you want to add uh, waypoints, uh, you can have the ship uh, do uh, patrol uh, routes like that, and then it will engage the enemies if they get within range. However, however, first I wasn't able to test if the script is uh, working, because no enemies have strolled by. After all, we would require enemies to get within 1.5 kilometers, and that is not common. Uh, second, well, when I tested the patrol block, I notice something. Uh, it's better if I show you. It's going to be rather interesting, okay? Uh, we are going to do this test twice. First, without collision avoidance, okay? So in order to get uh, the drone rolling, you have to go into the timer block. This timer block needs to be set up to loop itself plus the programmable block, okay? And uh, the programmable block just need to have the code there. It's not that difficult to set up, it's difficult to get it working. I hope this explains why. E yeah. E yeah. Okay, now you might say, but, 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 but... Without collision avoidance, that thing... Well, thank you for destroying the... You, you can stop now. Well, nothing that the time machine can't fix, right? Uh, in any case, let's try that again. But now, we'll turn on collision avoidance. And we can even turn on the precision mode, it doesn't really matter. The result, you will see, will be quite similar. Uh, yeah. Well, this shows something pretty obvious. We can't use these angers completely automatically. The uh, collision avoidance is not uh, sensitive enough to be able to uh, navigate its way into this connector and out, out, you know, coming from the anger outside. Uh, it will always derp out, which means that even if the script works, we have to control manually the drone, drop it, from the anger, you know, uh, away from our ship, and then activate the script. Uh, otherwise, uh, this automated drone will only do damage to us instead of the enemy. Okay, so, given the, these recent facts, we can uh, park away our auto drones in our anger, given that we have to be the ones flying them outside of the ship. I don't know what was <laughs> what I was expecting to be honest, but uh, uh, in my defense, I never played with the uh, autopilot or drones before, so uh, I wasn't uh, aware of the sensitivity of the collision avoidance or the smartness of the AI. Clearly, uh, both of those things are uh, lacking, shall we say? But in any case, we are going to leave this test prototype. Uh, clearly these blocks are not meant to be here. Uh, this remote control can be deconstructed. The patrol um, function... I don't, I, don't, I don't care about it. I don't want to be the... I don't want... The objective of the uh, autopilot drone is for the drone to do the stuff himself. If I have to set up waypoints, I don't need a script. I can do a defensive drone pretty simple just using the vanilla resources. So, uh, yeah. Patrol thingy, you can go away. 
But, uh, in any case, in any case, if the enemy happens to stroll in by, right, gets within, let's say, 10 to 5 kilometers, we'll pull out the drone, we'll drive it towards the enemy, and then as we approach, we'll turn on the script and leave the drone to do its thing, and we'll observe from, from afar the results of that experiment. But well, my friends, let me just show you another thing that I did in between episodes. I finished welding the uh, back end over here. This part still needs to be done manually. Uh, the machinery over here, we now have a nuclear reactor providing a whopping 300 megawatts of power. Uh, it's a little bit more than we need, but uh, I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to complain. Our hydrogen engines are already shut off. We don't need them to run, we can save the on the fuel, and we have the two jump drives available to us. Now, there is something that I find that I found to be particularly uh, interesting. We can only make jumps of 4 kilometers. It's like, at least according to my understanding. We are going to test this thing out in a little bit. But uh, at face value, you look at this and it's, it's like only 4 kilometers. That's kind of disappointing, because... Uh, Four kilometers we can do in like, I don't know, like two minutes. It's not the greatest of things. It's get, it's good to get away from danger and stuff like that. But still, uh, for uh, traveling, it's disappointing. But in any case, let's test it out. Let's test it out. Oh well, my friends, I am a dummy. I said four thousand. I read four thousand meters, and in fact, it says four thousand kilometers. Uh, that's more like it, okay? A uh, 4 kilometer jump would be really uh, not that efficient. But, um, well, my friends, we need to have a, uh, a small conversation because I came to this realization not right now, but uh, yesterday. Yes, since the last cut, between the last cut and this cut, there is a, there has been a lot of things that happened. Uh, like, for example, I went to the moon. I made a, f a few jumps and eventually I got there. But you might be, you might be asking yourself, what is that footage? Well, ask OBS, okay? Ask OBS because OBS for some reason had a brain fart and stopped recording. And I didn't notice it until it was like super late. Because I went to the moon and back to the uh, gold asteroid location. Uh, it's on the other side, damn it. But in any case, you can believe me, it's right there, gold. But we went to the moon and back to the gold uh, location only for me to realize that, uh, you know, a lot of things have been missed. But uh, the good news is, well, you didn't miss a lot because it was actually two hours of just jumping back and forward. In those two hours, I also realized one thing. Um, there is a bug in the game right now. Uh, I didn't realize that I experienced it. I went uh, and did some research and uh, it... It is already been um, addressed by the developers. They are going to try and outfix it as soon as possible. But the jump drive is kind of crazy right now. For example, because I reloaded the game, the jump drive says 4,000 km kilometers. But if I jump, it is going to this distance is going to change. Sometimes it says 300 kilometers. Sometimes it says 2,000 kilometers. I don't know. This thing is n it's not working properly. Not only that, if you are close to the planet, not within gravity, but close to the planet, the jump drive will assume that you are within gravitational influence, and once again, it will not work. So, y you know, those two hours were actually me jumping into the moon and flying back, because I, I was not understanding what the hell was going on, and, uh, yeah, yeah, I spent a lot of time flying through space. But I realized I was too close to the planets and the moon, to the planet, blah blah blah. In any case, in any case, a lot of things that probably are not that interesting as have happened, so the wor not the it wasn't exactly the worst thing in the world, right, that we lost that. So, but because we still have an episode to do, uh, we have to move on, and here's the thing. Let's go outside because I really don't have a lot of vision from here. The thing is, uh, the moon is really far away, right? The moon is, not only is on the other side of the planet, it's actually 300 kilometers away. I'm pretty sure the blimp, uh, if we, let's say we are on the moon and we request fuel, the blimp is going to try to go through the planet 
to reach us. That's bad, because I think the planet is going to win that fight. So what we need to do is to create several relay stations around the planet to create a path for our drones to move through. Let's say we want supplies on the moon, want the, the drones to follow that relay path. Not only that, because it's 300 kilometers away, we definitely need to make relay stations, otherwise we are not going to have a connection <coughs> to our uh, refueling station or any other things in here. So that's pretty much going to be the plan. And while we are executing that plan, we are also going to start uh, working towards the future of this playthrough. So, uh, the idea here is, given that we now have warp drive, keep warp drive capabilities, we have to explore the universe, or in this case the solar system, not the universe. Um, uh, so, in a way, we are going to need a centralized up for all of our resources and to build more stuff because our capital ship is already filled up with a bunch of stuff we can build a lot of things uh, and carry us with us so in in case we need to change our loadout for our capital ship let's say we want to uh, park the space atrocity somewhere and bring another ship with us uh, we need to have a uh, space station to do that so the idea here is going to be uh, we are going to create our first relay station over here it's a good location that i know we can jump into and out of uh, if I, I can jump into the uh, refueling station but i can't jump out of because of that bug that i mentioned earlier and so i think this is a good start to create a relay station we are at 40 kilometers from the uh, uh, refueling station anyway we are closing in on those 50 kilometer range so every 50 kilometers we need to have a relay station but i'm going to do it every 45 kilometer 40 to 45 kilometers just to make sure and so once we reach um and the objective for those relay stations is to go around the planet so uh, imagine a curve once we reach the apex of that curve i'm going to build my uh, space station there because it's going to be the midpoint between the moon the planet and Mars you know it's going to be like the closest point to all these three uh, thingies right so that's pretty much the objective I'm pretty sure we are going to spend a long time on uh, this area uh, I'm probably going to explore Mars a little bit and then the other planets is more like uh, just a touchdown to say that we actually have uh, arrived there right so that is going to be the plan for the future uh, not only for this episode, but for the future, because as you might imagine, uh, building a space station is not going to take just one episode. So, with that in mind, it is time for me to start building the first relay station and a few others. Uh, let's see if I can come up with a simple but effective design. Uh, uh, well, it's going to achieve all of our objectives. I'm not going to arm it up with a bunch of guns. It's not going to be necessary, I don't think. So, um, yeah, let's see what I can what I can come up with. Alright, my friend, so I think this is as uh, good of a location as any. Uh, in here, I don't think there is, like, uh, different alignments. Yeah, like, no. <laughs> we are in zero gravity. In any case, uh, this is going to be pretty simple. Um, for relay station, we actually just need some power, some storage for ammunition, two guns, and some solar panels, so... Uh, Nothing fancy, nothing fancy. I'm pretty sure I can come up with something uh, easy to do. So, uh, let's get started. Well, my friend, this is going to be pretty much it. Uh, I still need to add solar panels, obviously, but... Uh, to be honest, I need to weld all of these first. Uh, before I add the outside structure and the solar panels, which are going to attach to said outside structure. Uh, so, yeah. Just give me a moment while I do some uh, welding jobs around this place and then uh, we are going to take care of adding the final bits. 30 shells and a bunch of uh, boxes of ammo should be more than enough. The thing should not be seeing any action. Um, I'm pretty sure the game doesn't uh, render pirates if you are not nearby. So uh, I'm going to assume we are not going to have any problems whatsoever with this facility. But still, always a good idea to uh, leave um, a little bit of insurance behind. Now, um, energy low. Now I have to recharge my suit, 
and uh, after that I'm going to start laying down the remaining blocks and the solar rubric. go my friends the last thing has been welded in our relay station pretty cool but at the same time pretty simple uh, the objective is for these things not to be super expensive uh, and easily built it took me like uh, I don't know maybe 30 minutes to build this maybe a little bit more but uh, at the same time I was still figuring things out from now on we are going to first search for a control panel info you should be a station, by the way. And we're going to rename this Relay Station. Right? This is our second Relay Station. And some purposes, it is the first of this series. And now we'll take a good look at it and Control B. There we go. So now we have a Relay Station blueprint. Further Relay Stations can be uh, just uh, built uh, on the side of our ship using a projector. Uh, to help us out a little bit for a uh, faster uh, faster build process. Now, once we reach the uh, point where we are going to build our uh, uh, supply hub, our space station, 
uh, or centralized area. In there, we are going to build a welding, a welding ship to help us out uh, do stuff like this, and then we are going to replace the space atrocity with that uh, particular vehicle so that we can uh, finish up uh, any relay stations uh, that much quicker, and of course to also help out uh, in building the space station itself. But now, oh wait, there is one final thing. We can't forget about it. Uh, we have the relay station. Uh, I'm pretty sure the antenna already set it up, but uh, just to double check it. Antenna, maximum range, and now, on top of the relay station, we are going to put a waypoint for the um, drones to follow. Somewhere around here. That's good enough. There we go. Relay station, waypoint one. This way, um... You know, we can uh, send our blimp through here instead of uh, through the planet. I think that's a wise decision, but uh, in any case, now let me get into the cockpit, close uh, this off, make sure that every single uh, ship is correctly attached, and then we are going to make a quick jump and build another relay station. Okay, my friend, so now we are in the control seat. We are going to convert back into a ship. I know I still haven't renamed my uh, capital ship, but I still don't have a name for it. So far, the best name that I came up with is the Swordfish, but still. I'm, I'm still thinking, the capital ship is not yet done, so uh, it's fine, it's fine. In any case, uh, let's go over here into the menu, select one of our jump drives, and I'm going to remove this waypoint that I had uh, previously. And uh, yeah, as you can see, to, like uh, before it was 4,000 kilometers, now it's 700, and whatever. And uh, the next jump is going to be different again. Different again, so uh, that, whatever, right? So, like I said, around 45 kilometer difference, uh, kilometer uh, jump, so that we have uh, a good distance from our relay station without losing connection. So now uh, that we are ready. Let's prepare the jump. Uh, damn it. Not what I meant to do. Uh, it's this one. Line jump. We can do 100% meaning that we are not going to jump into any asteroid. Uh, or anything, otherwise it would cut us off a little bit short. So yeah, let's make the jump. And even observe this moment as uh, it is technically the first jump of this playthrough. Technically, of course. Okay, so now we are in the new position. Before we start doing anything, let me just double check. Okay, we can jump away from here. Okay, it doesn't uh, uh, show any bug, which means that we can build our relay station right here. I just wanted to make sure that um, um, we would not build a relay station in a, in a place that uh, is still affected by the uh, gravity of the uh, planet. Well, not, not the gravity. Uh, because of the bug, that thing is not working properly, and so uh, we need to be far away from the planet in order for the jump drive to even work in the first place, so... Uh, yeah. Now, let me just uh, build, like, uh, a few blocks, place a projector, and uh, project the relay station, so that we can uh, build uh, off of it. Okay, so with the projector in place, I just need the uh, console, or uh, we interact with it... Uh, is projector it would be this one and it's going to blueprints uh, here we are really station oh speaking about blueprints guys for the last like uh, 10 12 15 episodes I have a bunch of blueprints in the description so if you want to take a, a look at them uh, you can I just have completely forgotten to uh, tell you about it, uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, so far I believe we have the uh, Hulk, the uh, Firefly, Monstrosity, and... Uh, we have four blueprints, I can't remember. <laughs> Which uh, is the fourth. In any case, uh, now that that is said, let me place the relay station in position. There we go, my friends. Blueprint in place. Now, uh, I just realized that maybe going to have some trouble uh, dealing with the uh, interior part of the craft, but, uh, well, I'll figure out as I go. It's not... it can't be that difficult, right? There we go, my friends. 
This thing is now built and it took me, uh, I would say, close to 25 minutes? 10 less minutes, so uh, not bad, not bad at all. Uh, you can uh, go away now. Uh, now, the only thing left to do is to add a waypoint and some ammunition to this thing. I had to disconnect it, otherwise it was showing every single cargo container in the... Uh, on the capital ship and I could not uh, figure out which one was the one of the relay station so yeah let me just uh, add the uh, new waypoint and the uh, ammunition and then we can move on to the next location uh, so we might have an issue I can't convert this thing into a station because I completely forgot uh, to do that while we were attached and now we can, because this thing is moving. Or can't we? Of course we can. All that I need to do is uh, add a landing gear to the space atrocity, attach myself to that thing, and then um, uh, convert it into a ship. In this case, into a station. Okay, here we go. And we should be attached. We should be attached. We should be attached. We are now attached. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to convert into a ship now. Yeah, good luck. There we go. Jesus, it took me a while. <sighs> but eventually we got it. Uh, this thing should now be stationary. And the space atrocity came to the rescue once again. And uh, now we can move on to do another relay station. The waypoint is set. The relay station is built and working. And now, we're going to go into our jump drive, and we are going to make another blind jump, 46 kilometers this way. And there we go. Let's jump. And then we'll verify if we can jump again. If we can, we'll build a relay station there. That is unlike... Uh, uh, there is unless there is an enemy base right here, which doesn't seem to be the case. Can we jump again? Yes, we can. So, given that we can jump once again, uh, we can also build another relay station over here. And just to double check if everything is working, we can still control the fuel station even though it is at uh, 110 kilometers away. So, we have uh, verified that for now everything is working. And there we go, my friends, the next relay station projection is already in place and ready to get welded. Now, uh, one thing, uh, technically speaking, we didn't really need to make a relay station every 50 kilometers. We only need that because we are using these antennas. There is other types of antennas, like the laser antenna, which has a far like um, greater range and uh, the uh, antenna dish, which also has a uh, somewhat better range. <coughs> However, uh, these ones are somewhat directional, uh, which means that uh, while this broadcasts in a 50 kilometer bubble, uh, this one over here, the laser antenna, only broadcasts facing forward, and it needs to have direct a line of sight. The, the other one, I don't know how exactly this one uh, how does this one work? But I'm pretty sure it also needs to uh, have uh, line of sight and have both antennas uh, facing each other. Otherwise, it probably is not going to work. Which means that uh, th they are very limited when it comes to the area that they um, uh, broadcast on. Uh, they can broadcast on long distances, but uh, the area itself is very, very small. And because of that, well we would lose contact with uh, our cargo drones, and uh, we don't want that to happen now, do we? The third relay station of the episode is now built, and uh, as per usual I need to detach it before I uh, give it any um, ammunition. Let me just see if it, it, uh, if it stays as a station. Pretty sure it's going to, yep, build a station. Pretty cool. Uh, now it's just a matter of uh, leaving a little bit of ammo behind. Uh, I want a few more uh, assault cannon shells, and um, we can move on to the next one. Uh, I think I'm just going to build another relay station, and then the, on the next jump we build our supply hub. I think uh, I think that's a good decision. I'm to convert into a ship. 
Okay, so now we have mobility once again. Uh, I'm not even going to deconstruct the uh, projector. No point. Uh, okay, so the moon is that way. Mars is that way. Probably it would be a good idea for us to start curving our trajectory a little bit. Uh, I think that is going to be fine. So let's prepare another 46... <coughs> sorry. Another 46 kilometer jump. Nothing in our path. Pretty cool. Time to bail. And... Boom. Ah, okay, and... Oh, there is uh, a few asteroids nearby. I can even see some uh, resources in there. Probably magnesium or cobalt. Nothing that we uh, desperately need. Uh, sh okay, okay. So, uh, by now, you probably can guess what I have to do uh, next. If you guessed, build another relay station. You would be correct. But this is going to be the last one. Uh, that I'm going to build before I build the supply hub. Uh, I think... Let's see... 153 kilometers away, however it's not really 153. The, uh, the uh, blimp would have to go through all of these checkpoints, so uh, it's a little bit more. But, um, yeah. Further than that, I think it's uh, asking a little bit too much of the uh, fuel express, so... Yeah, that's my reasoning behind it. Uh, in any case, time to build another relay station. And would you look at that? Just like magic, the relay station number 5 is built. And uh, the fourth relay station of this episode, the waypoint is set. The only thing missing is for me to detach it, add some uh, ammunition, and then we are going to jump in this uh, general direction. Uh, now it's time to start curving towards the moon. Uh, we already curved a little bit with this uh, way station, but now we are going to try and jump somewhere in this direction, and that's where we are going to have our supply hub. But for now, let me just uh, resupply this with ammo, and then we can be on our way. Alright, my friends, we have done this routine countless times by now, but uh, let's convert into a ship. Let's rotate carefully so that we don't collide with uh, the relay station. After all, we are quite close. In fact, let's turn on our engines a little bit. The other side, please. Hopefully we didn't burn anything. Uh, but that's neither here or there. We'll never know if we did any damage or not, so... Uh, uh, oops. In any case, in any case, let's start pointing in this general direction. A little bit less. We just have the proper orientation. There we go. That would be the way, I think. Yeah. Okay, let's prepare for another jump. Uh, the distance is set, 46 kilometers, so let's go like this. There is nothing in our way, pretty cool. Let's go. Prepare another jump, and now, instead of a relay station, we are going to build a supply hub. For a moment I thought I, w I had something by my side, but no. Okay, so, uh, that's the relay station number 5. Where's Mars? It's probably that thing over there. Uh, we just can't see it. It's eclipsing the sun. But uh, in any case, in here is where we are going to have our supply hub. The idea would be that we would have a supply hub right here, capable of uh, getting supplies from all the uh, different asteroids that we have tagged. Um, uh, in, in those uh, previous journeys. And then from this supply hub, uh, we would build another relay uh, line all the way to Mars and create another supply hub right there. That way we could transport materials between uh, hubs using our cargo drones uh, remotely. And uh, then that supply station would allow us to uh, propel... It would allow us to uh, go towards other planets farther away 
we would have to jump back for supplies, but still it's better to jump into Mars than it is to jump all the way back to the planet Earth, I suppose. Uh, it's a lot, a lot less uh, distance, but uh, that's a meeting. But uh, in any case, now we are going to uh, set up our um, supply up location. But uh, the building of the su the supply up itself is something that we are going to do in the next episode. And also, uh, we are also going to build a vehicle that is going to allow us to build the supply hub much much weaker because if the supply hub is uh, anything close to the size of this thing it would take me way too much time to weld it by hand another eight episodes just to build a supply hub i don't think so so we are going to build a vehicle similar to the space atrocity in shape but uh, capable of having uh, welders and grinders so that we could weld and grind anything that we please and uh, we would also give it a remote control so that we could set up a waypoint by the um, gas port over here and have the uh, vehicle dock by itself that way it would remove some of the stress of the um, um, of that type of uh, welding ship, uh, because for me uh, I always find it much more convenient to uh, just use the engineer's jetpack, right, to go back and forward to collect supplies because docking takes a little bit of time, but uh, if we have a remote control do it for us, it's going to speed up the process much, much more. So um, I think that's the way to go, especially if we, we want to build big um, and in a decent amount of time, that is. So, with that in mind, I think it's time for us to start setting ourselves up uh, for the long haul. Uh, in this case, we are probably going to stay in here a couple of episodes. Um, I already converted the ship into a station, so now let's open up everything, make sure that we are ready to respond to any enemy threats. Um, sometimes, you know, we, jump, we might jump uh, into a close proximity to a pirate, station, shall we say, and then they are going to uh, send the drones to attack us, and uh, we want to be ready if that is going to be the case. Uh, I noticed there is a Mayday nearby, uh, I'm pretty sure they don't send drones, but still. We never know, we never know, and we must be ready. So the final thing left for me to do in this episode is to extend this light armor block uh, tower, so that we have a place to start building our uh, supply station, right? Or supply up. That thing is going to be uh, quite... it's going to be large, shall we say, so I want to give it a good distance away from the uh, main ship. Um, after all, I kind of want to have at least, bare minimum, uh, 10 to 12 uh, hydrogen tanks, large ones, and 10 to 12 large cargo containers, so that we can store up enough materials uh, to... Um, make it a significant thing, right? Otherwise, if we can only store uh, two large cargo containers worth of stuff, eventually it's going to be filled up and we won't have the things that we actually want. So, um, yeah, I think it would be advantageous for us uh, to make it as big as humanly possible. And with all of that said, my friends, I think this is going to be a shorter episode than usual, but uh, it took me a while to build all of those relay stations. Not only the... <laughs> If we also take into consideration the time that was lost uh, while traveling around in warp space uh, that uh, OBS decided not to record, uh, this is uh, already a pretty long episode recording time-wise, so uh, I think we'll have to cut it in uh, for here. Next episode, like I said, we're going to start off by building the um, uh, multi-purpose welding ship. Uh, if it goes 50% to what I have in mind, it's going to be awesome. So uh, I'm pretty excited about that. And I hope that you are too. But with all of that said, I hope that you have enjoyed this episode and that you are enjoying the series so far. If you are, please consider subscribing and help the channel grow. In the meantime, this is the Base Manager signing out. Bye bye!